tennis time. Whoa, 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 whoa! It's ball time, all day, every day. I'm sorry, but like, what kind of a sport is basketball? Can your ball even go any slower? At least my ball's got bounce. What? You, me, ladder, now. It's on. Wait, what? Uh, I want to see some video of this. Mmm, <laughs> Diet Coke. Man, I gotta come up with something. Hmm, maybe I can use physics. Eureka! How about you drop both the balls together and we'll see which one goes higher. I, I, basketball for the win. Alright. Tennis ball for the win! <laughs> Your momentum got conserved. I owe it all to you, Diet Coke. Thank you. Okay, but all jokes aside, all Diet Coke can really do is be delicious. But physics can explain this, so watch the rest of the video. After release, the forces acting on each ball become unbalanced and the ball begins to accelerate according to Newton's first law. Each ball has only the force of gravity acting on it and is accelerating at 9.8 meters per second squared down. The force of gravity on each ball can be calculated using Newton's second law, F net equals mass times acceleration. According to Newton's third law, the ground will apply an equal and opposite reaction force back on the ball. Since both balls start at rest, they have only gravitational potential, just as they impact the ground. The gravitational potential has all been converted to kinetic energy. The kinetic energy becomes elastic potential as the ball is compressed on impact. Energy is conserved, but the ball will not achieve its original height on the bounce because some energy is lost on impact to heat and sound, etc. The momentum of each ball is the product of its mass and its velocity. It will have momentum before and after the collision, and the difference between them is equal to the impulse of the impact. The impulse is the product of the reaction force applied from the ground to the ball, and the time that took for the collision to occur. The momentum of this collision is conserved, which means the total momentum after the collision must equal to the total momentum before the collision plus impulse. When the tennis and basketball are falling together, they can be treated as one mass because acceleration due to gravity is constant and they are falling at the same rate. When the basketball hits the ground, the reaction force of the ground on the ball causes the ball to accelerate upwards, which causes the less massive tennis ball to accelerate upwards faster through a transfer of kinetic energy. This is because it requires less energy to get a smaller mass to a certain velocity. So why does the basketball bounce lower when dropped with the tennis ball? Momentum and energy are conserved. The tennis ball's momentum has increased, so the basketball's momentum must decrease. After the basketball transfers kinetic energy to the tennis ball, it has less energy to become gravitational potential. Brought to you by the power of physics. That's all, folks.